man. I sorry. I was supposed to call you at five, and I got distracted by this news on TV, and I apologize. So. Oh, no worries, no worries. Uh, I just need yeah. a few minutes of your time, but I really thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to do a, a quick phone interview. No problem. All right. Well, first of all, um, Rodney. Uh, uh, put this idea in my head to, to interview you because I didn't even know you were going to be performing uh, this sat uh, Saturday at the Funky Biscuit in Boca. Story and of my life. I hear you. Uh, anyways, um, we're in Miami at the Magic City Casino, and of course, um, Fog Hat is performing. Tonight? Uh, no, this was uh, two weeks ago. So I meet oh, Rodney. Huh? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I meet Rodney, and he goes. Oh, uh, Rodney was playing bass. Exactly. So he goes, uh, you're a local guy. I'm like, yeah, I'm in Fort Lauderdale. He goes, well, you know Pat Travers? I'm like, of course. Who doesn't know Pat Travers? And uh, he goes, why don't you come on up and uh, cover the show? So um, he facilitated this interview for us. Cool. Well, I just want to ask you real quick, um, at what point in your life did you know that you wanted to be an entertainer to do this, you know, uh, as a profession? Uh, pretty early. Uh, I was about nine years old in 1964 when the Beatles appeared on the Ed Sullivan show on a Sunday night and, uh, and then they were on a couple of weeks in a row and uh, you know it was all very very exciting and, and uh, intriguing and it just looked like something I wanted to do so probably right from that. So it has absolutely nothing to do with all the screaming girls in the audience? No, not really. I mean, I never thought that was, you know, the most important thing with that band. Uh, I, even though I didn't really know anything about anything, they just, you could tell that they, you know, they created their own music and had a lot to do with their own sound, um, you know, prior to that and sort of uh, kind of like that today is there's writers, producers, arrangers, Sure. Guys that make the videos, guys that do this and that. But when the Beatles came along, they did it all themselves. And uh, so that was unique and uh, was inspiring. To now, besides the Beatles uh, around that time, who were some of the artists that you looked up to that may have helped to shape your sound? Well, uh, of course, you know, I got my very first guitar when I was 12 in 1966 and uh, and that was right at the well it was just a little while a year later I guess when I heard Jimi Hendrix for the first time and um, then of course it was Eric Clapton with the cream and oh man just all kinds of bands Led Zeppelin uh, you know Jimmy Page Jeff Beck was amazing um, Johnny Lehrer totally amazing, Carlos Santana. All of these guys came in that period from about 66 to 1971, you know, 70. So, uh, it wasn't any one guy in particular, I liked them all, you know, and, sure. you know, we, I did play songs and bands by everybody, you know, Beatles included. Sure. Now, now, as a as a guitarist, are you self taught? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I never really had uh, any kind of formal lessons. I uh, I just tried to be really observant, and even when I first started playing, I would go and see any kind of a band. You know, any kind. It didn't matter to me. I just wanted to see people playing instruments and and learn what to do. You know. Sure. I <laughs> now your voice is also your instrument uh, do you do anything to maintain your vocals to, to do what with my vocals uh, to maintain it you know is there something oh, no. yeah sure yeah absolutely don't talk after the show if you can help it uh, and make sure you get a good night's sleep and drink lots of water and breathe right you learn to breathe properly I see yeah, but, uh, yeah, your voice, you know, it gets tired, and uh, especially after a show, if you, you know, uh, yeah, it takes a while to learn how to, you know, but I've never really had major voice problems. 
problems as far as it being durable. Or, and I've learned how to sing better over the years. And and uh, so, yeah, I just think getting as much rest as you can and trying not to talk too loudly or too often in between shows. Sure, sure. Now, both... Um, <laughs> Now, both Nico and Carmine have both been a part of the Pat Travers Band in the past, and they're actually not too far from where you're uh, performing on Saturday night. Any chance they might show up? Um, I haven't spoken to Nico in a while. I guess I'll give him a call. Yeah. Um, I would imagine if he's around, he'll come. Uh, Carmine? What do, you, what do you mean, Carmine? Um, uh, peace? Yeah. He's, he's not... Down south. Oh no, kidding! I thought he was up in this area. He's here quite no, often. You're, you're thinking about uh, Mark Stein, the keyboard player. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, from the Vanilla Fudge. But yeah. but I see Carmine all over the place here. Uh, Rick Derringer was just here not too long ago, and uh, we go in the back and uh, backstage, and there's Carmine there, you know. And oh, okay. You well, go to uh, what he was doing down there. He's usually either in New York or Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be great if Nico showed up. That would be awesome, I think, because he's right well, down the road. I haven't really thought about it, to tell you the truth. So if anybody that we know that comes by, I'll be happy to see. Awesome. Now, looking down the road, uh, what's next for you and the Pat Travers Band? Well, um, you know, we're kind of finishing off this year with uh, a little run out to Northern California, and uh, and we're just going to be doing, I guess, as many shows as we can next year. Okay. Um, I, as far as recording another album project, I don't foresee that happening at the moment. I not that I won't be recording or even releasing some things, but I'm. I just don't see doing a whole CD. It doesn't seem to make, be worth the effort that it takes to do it. Mm -hmm. you know. Now, is there, um, is there anything, maybe in a vault somewhere, things that have been done and unreleased it that might end up popping mm -hmm. up? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there might be some stuff. Um, as a matter of fact, I was talking to... Uh, my co-producer, Sean Shannon, the other day, and he said he found some things that we had worked on. But generally, you know, if I start something new, I'll put a little rough track down of it. And if I don't come up with something sort of satisfying or I can't come up with anything really vocally, I'll just move on, mm. you know. Sure. All right, one final question. Are you uh, still um, practicing karate? Yes, I am. I uh, yeah, I've been started training again about six weeks ago, and uh, going to class at night, and uh, going every morning to the dojo and doing all my training and my katas. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm happy to be doing that too. Well, that sounds great, Pat. I want to thank you again so much for taking uh, the time out of your schedule to speak with me. And all right. We're looking forward to seeing you and Rodney and everybody else, and um, I've never seen you perform live in 23 years of doing this, so I'm really excited, and right. um, we'll be there to review, so we'll come back and say hi and introduce ourselves. Okay, my brother. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. God yeah. bless and safe travels. Cheers. Bye, buddy.